I spent 120 hours building an iOS app as a solo founder. I want to break down exactly what I learned to get this on the app store in only two hours per day. In this video, I'm gonna talk about product founder fit, covering the actual apps features, show you how I validated, and then dive into the tech stack. So stick around if you wanna know how to come up with ideas that specifically you should be working on and how to actually validate those ideas so you know there's some light at the end of the tunnel when you're deep in the guts of the product and nothing is going as planned. So stick around and we'll go through all of those topics. So I've been into fitness now for, since I was a teenager actually. In fact, here's a picture of me back in October completing the Kilda Marathon, which was a hugely brutal event. Probably actually the biggest physical achievement that I've complete in my lifetime. I'm now also training for a triathlon. So again, the training is ramping up and again, it's getting quite difficult. When I'm in these really intense training periods, it's really difficult to know when I need to push myself and when I need to rest. So I wanted to build a product around this to try and solve that problem, especially to try and demystify all of the bullshit that you hear online, particularly when a lot of advice is really conflicting as well. You just don't know what to trust, what specifically works for you, because some advice is like super generic. And these are the kind of reasons why I think I was the perfect founder for this particular product, which I'll show you in a second, is an app around fitness and recovery and using data to help show you when you need to push yourself and when you need to rest. I think it's super important that you specifically can understand the pain points around a product so that you've got more passion invested into it and you know the particular features that would work well and won't work well because you are your own target customer. This alone though is not enough to validate that an app is actually useful or has product market fit. So don't use this alone as validation. So we'll get into the steps that I took for validation later on in the video, but for now, whilst I'm saying it's really important to have a product founder fit, don't use that purely as validation. So going through these really hard training plans I needed to know when I wanted to push myself and when I needed to rest. So I built an app specifically that solves this problem. It's called Protocol AI and it's now available on the App Store for anyone to download. So the way Protocol solves this problem is first, we track all of your health metrics. We pull that into the app, show it as useful metrics like performance, sleep, physical strain and how much energy you're actually burning as well. The second part is a habit tracker so you can track all of your particular habits and then we can correlate that with your health metrics to see exactly what's moving the needle for you. So there's no guessing what works because the data doesn't lie. Through this as well, the app would also monitor your metrics, monitor your habits, and then give you brand new recommendations that it feels can help push your fitness further. This way you can craft a protocol or a routine that's perfect for you based on exactly your health metrics. So although I mentioned that I'm the perfect customer for this product, that alone is not enough to actually validate that there's actually a product market fit. So I wanted to go into the entire process of how I came up with this exact idea, how I validated it, and then how I built it. So I followed something called the 22200 framework, which is a methodology from a guy called Rob Wallin. And it's basically spending two hours just doing an initial keyword research and competitor analysis, then 20 hours doing actual validation with a landing page, and then maybe a test ad campaign, just to see if you can actually get a positive conversion rate for people to give you their email address. And then the 200 step would be the actual app build itself. So for the validation phase, we're just gonna look for now at the two and the 20 step. So initially it was just doing keyword research, not for SEO purposes, just to see if people are searching for terms related to the idea I was working on. So we're looking for terms around improving performance, improving health metrics, improving sleep quality, this kind of stuff. From just 20 minutes of keyword research, you can start to see exactly what people are looking for, maybe certain long tail keywords that you wouldn't think of. And then once that's confirmed, you can then go on to do a bit of competitor analysis. So look at other players in your market to see if they're performing because the best way to see if a market exists is to confirm if people are already in that market and getting positive conversions. So the two apps that I researched and came across were Athletic and Wildtory. Those are making somewhere between 200,000 per month on the App Store and 2 million per month on the App Store. So that was a decent confirmation that there's actually a product market fit for these kind of apps. You know, I could look at other apps like MyFitnessPal, but that's not really that representative because when you have these huge apps and they mostly get around now through word of mouth, that's not really confirmation that a new player can enter the market. So looking at smaller players that you potentially never heard of, it's a little bit more confirmation that a new player can enter the market and can actually 
take a chunk of that market as well. So to do this, I literally just went on a website called Sensor Tower. I typed in the names of these competitors just to see how much they're making per month on the App Store. And then you can get an idea of the potential market size that you can start to take a chunk out of. The third part of the validation that I did specifically for this app was to check how other products are actually getting users through their marketing funnel and actually into the app as well. You know, are they running meta ads? Are they doing organic social? Because if you can understand what particular marketing channels are working for your competitors, you can reuse similar patterns to get users into your funnel and into your app and then convert them to paying customers as well. So to do this, I just went onto meta ads. I typed in the competitors to see if they're running ads. And then a really good idea to use here is to look at the ads that they've been running for a really long time, because what companies will do is they'll run ads and the ones that are converting really well, they'll leave up and the ones that stop converting, they'll cancel. So on the Meta Ads platform, you can see exactly what ads they've stopped running and exactly what ads they're continuing to run. So when you go and launch your own ad campaigns, this can be a really good seed to know exactly what's gonna work for you as well. You might interestingly find that some products are not running ads at all. So you've then got to ask yourself, how are they actually getting customers into their product? So look at TikTok, look at Instagram. Are they running organic social campaigns? Are they paying influencers to talk about their product? If this is the approach that they've taken and it's clearly working for them, then maybe it's something that you can also replicate. So include this as part of the validation process because the product itself is not the entire system. The product is just a really small part of the entire system. And this is a mistake that I used to make early on thinking that the product was everything. The product is just a really small part of the funnel that you're gonna build. The top of the funnel is gonna be organic social or ads, and then you've gotta get people into your website and then to download the app and then to go through the onboarding and then to enter a trial and then to actually get use out of the product so they don't cancel the trial. So think about this when you're actually building products, just think of it as a part of the system so that you don't end up building something that's literally unmarketable or there's no way of actually getting new customers into the app. Just make sure that you're considering the entire funnel from the very start. So once I confirmed that there was actually a decent market for this product, I then moved over to the 20 step, which was to launch a website, launch a leads ad campaign on Facebook, and then just get users over to the website and then seeing what the conversion rate was for them to sign up and give me their email address. Through doing this, I had a really positive ad campaign and a really decent return on ad spend. So I could then use that as a predictor for how well the ad campaign would run when the app is actually finished. This way you don't spend 100, 200 hours building an app just to launch an ad campaign and then find it impossible to get a positive conversion rate. So once these two validation steps were complete, it gave me confidence to know that when I'm gonna be in the weeds building features, that there's actually light at the end of the tunnel because it's so hard to actually keep going and not quit and not think that your idea is a piece of shit when you're really deep into features and things aren't going as well as you thought they would be. So do this validation to sort of give yourself that hope that when you're building in the early mornings or the late nights on your own, that you're more likely to stick with it and actually get to the finish line. You know, a lot of people say that starting is the hardest part, but that is just completely false. Finishing is actually the hardest part. Actually getting the app to a finished state that's tested has all the analytics, the payment, the or flows in place, actually getting it through app store review. That is the really difficult part. So let's dive now into the tech stack that I use to actually build this product. I myself talk a lot about solopreneurship and I'm actually a web developer myself, not a mobile developer. I do have some experience building mobile apps with React Native like seven, eight years ago, but the landscape was completely different then to what it is now. So I wanna talk about the actual tech I used as a web developer and how I actually managed to build this app solo in a decent amount of time. I think in the end it took 120 hours to build the app. That was two hours every morning for two months. So the tech stack I chose is the one that I was just more familiar with. So as a web developer, I'm really efficient and quick building with React. So again, I picked React Native as the framework which meant that the learning curve to actually building out the UI was quite small. And if you've not built mobile apps before, there's also a wrapper around React Native now called Expo. And this basically manages all of the technical details around managing native plugins, in-app purchases, push notifications, this kind of stuff. In fact, Expo is so good nowadays that I didn't open Xcode once through this entire project 
literally not one time. All of the plugins were managed through a central config file called app.json and then Expo also provide a service called Expo Application Services. This allowed me to build the app on their cloud services and actually deploy it over to App Store Connect, at which point I could download it through test flight and confirm and QI the app myself. And then I can actually submit it to App Store Review through App Store Connect. So using these tools took a ton of work away, particularly for me who's not a mobile developer. So if you're a web developer yourself, then I think that is a pretty good front end stack to use. They have a really decent free plan that can often solve all of your needs. But if you do go over the build credits in a month, you can also opt into a pay as you go service rather than a monthly subscription, which will often work out a little bit cheaper if you're not constantly deploying new builds. For the back end, I just followed the same tech stack that I use with web apps, which is hosting the server on Heroku and then using Node.js and a GraphQL server. The reason I picked GraphQL is just because I'm super proficient and quick with that, much quicker in fact than if I was just to stick with standard REST. And I actually found it a really decent solution for working on mobile because of course the main benefits of things like GraphQL is that you can get less data over the wire, you can craft your queries to make sure that you're only requesting the data that you need and using things like the Apollo cache meant that I can persist data and cache it on the client to get more of that native app feel without having to install a bunch of extra third party libraries. Now, I also just want to talk about one of the key features of the app. And I think this is a must have when you're building MVPs and when you're building apps on your own. So here is the app and you'll notice that on the left here, we have a support button and this opens up a chat interface. So you can immediately start talking to a founder, i.e. me, to give feedback, positive or negative, about the product. Because if I'm sitting there paying influencers and running paid ads, then I need to iterate on user feedback. Because even though you've done all of this validation and you spent all of this time building the MVP, there's still no guarantee that the product that you've actually built is the correct product. You're trying to solve a problem that you've researched, and so you create a product for that problem. But even with all of the validation that you've done, there's no guarantee that that is actually the correct product. The only way to actually improve this and actually get to a decent product market fit is iterating on customer feedback. So if you put in all of this effort in and paying all of this money, it's absolutely crucial that customers can give you feedback as easily as possible. Also compare this to some of the bigger apps out there where the customer support is hidden away in some nested menu. I think it's really important to make sure this is front of house so that customers can give feedback as easily as possible, good or bad, and then you can constantly iterate on that. So if they request a new feature, get it up in a couple of days and imagine the customer experience they're gonna be feeling compared to some of these bigger apps. This is actually a massive advantage that you have over some of the bigger players. If you wanna learn a lot more about building apps solo, how to validate and all of that good stuff, then check out another video that I've also recorded on the same topic. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.